There are 100 days until GCSEs begin in May. So today I'm going to be giving you guys a plan on how to revise effectively all the way up until GCSEs begin. This plan will be split into two components, testing and revision. The first component is testing. This is basically where you do a bunch of practice questions or practice exams for all the different subjects. The first list you should make is a list of all your subjects. The principle of this is that you're going to do practice questions for loads of different topics in that specific subject. If you get less than 50% correct in that specific topic, then you should write it down on your subject list underneath the subject that it goes into. At the end of this stage, you should basically have loads of topics underneath every single subject you do for GCSEs. And these are all topics that you should be able to do better in because you got less than 50% the first time you tested on them. If you get more than 50% on one of your topic practice questions or practice exam questions, then don't just forget about that topic. Write it down and write the percentage you got on a different sheet of paper or a different plan that you have and collate those together as well. Leave them separate from your weak topics that got less than 50% because you're going to be using those later. Now, of course, it's all well and good telling you to do practice questions on these topics, but do you even know the websites you should use to be doing this or the resources you should use to be getting these practice questions for each topic? Well, some of you may, but some of you will not. So I'm going to give you them. So for maths, there are three different things I would probably use. Coba Maths has questions for every single topic in maths. So does CGP, CGP books, if you have a CGP practice textbook, and then Maths Watch also, as well as Maths Junior. For English literature, CGP books again, they have practice questions for essays you should write. And you can also ask your teacher to provide some practice essay questions that haven't been on past exams. For the sciences, there are exam questions for every single topic in websites like Physics and Maths Tutor, Cognito, and obviously, once again, CGP textbooks. For languages, you can basically just choose any topic at all and practice writing a 90 word essay on that topic. It can literally be anything. In terms of speaking, listening, and reading, I'll tell you all about that in a different video, specifically for the languages. The English language, CGP, has many different questions for essays you should write for question fives, question fours and question threes. But then you can also get prompts and such questions from your teachers as well, as well as extracts you can use to answer them. I'm not going to cover resources for any other subject because those subjects that I just covered are the main subjects that everyone in the UK does. You may be wondering how you're going to mark the essay questions you answer and that's going to be your teachers. You're going to give them the essay questions get your feedback and the marks that you get and once again if you get less than 50 percent put it on your topic hit list make sure you're noting down the percentages you got for each topic that was less than 50 percent so basically noting down the percentages you got for the topics that you have put onto your topic hit list so after you've done the two to three week period of just doing loads of exam questions for certain topics practice questions for certain topics You've got loads of percentages near those topics and all your weak topics lined up against your subjects. For each subject, you're going to add all the percentages of the topics you got together and divide by the number of topics there are in the list. You'll get your average percentage from that and you'll write that next to the subject. This way you can also make a subject hit list with the subject that has the lowest percentage at the top of that hit list and the subject that has the highest percentage at the bottom. Therefore, you know which subjects you need to prioritize for the revision stage, which I'll be talking about next. Okay, so now we have the revision component. There are many, many, many different ways to revise each and every subject, but you need to make sure you're revising those specific topics that you put in your topic hit list. I'm going to give you ways to revise these subjects, and in the revision stage, you're going to spend, once again, two to three weeks just revising these weak topics. We're gonna split the revision stage into separate subjects. And I'm going to tell you how to revise for each of those subjects, but very briefly, because I'm also going to be making videos separately for each of those subjects in the coming weeks. For maths, you've already done the practice stage and maths is just practicing and practicing questions over and over again. But for revision, you need to go over certain maths concepts. And in order to do that, you need to watch videos so that you understand the math concept you're going over so that later in the second testing stage you know how to answer those questions and there are loads of math videos out there explaining difficult math concepts for GCSEs. Cobra Maths makes them, Maths Genie makes them, 
and those are just a few examples. But really videos are the only way you can properly revise maths that isn't just doing loads of questions, marking them, then doing more questions. For English literature, there are loads of separate ways to revise. There's CGP textbook that talk through acts of a play, parts of the story you're reading, and gives you important quotes to remember. You can put important quotes into flashcards and go over them again and again in those flashcards using Argy or Quizlet as different flashcard apps. You can read the CGP textbook to see how to structure your essays or any textbook that you have. You can make mind maps on certain themes and characters in whatever you're studying and then look over those mind maps. For the sciences specifically, there are also many, many ways to revise. We've got Cognito and Free Science Lessons putting out very, very useful videos. For me, Cognito's videos helped me way more because they visualized what they were talking about. But for the practicals, Free Science Lessons definitely is the go-to. On Cognito's website, after the video, there are questions asking you about the topic the video was going over. You can do these for the week topics that are on your topic hit list. So it's very specific, which is very useful. You can also very easily make flashcards for sciences. You should have already amassed a, a lot of flashcards, but if you haven't, you can start now. I don't think you can go over the entire syllabus making flashcards on the entire thing, but maybe you can make flashcards on the week topics in your topic hit list by going over the Cognito and Free Science Lessons videos and going over any textbooks you have as well. Physics and Maths Tutor also has some flashcards that you can use for science, as well as topic summaries, I'm pretty sure, and its own mind maps. So Physics and Maths Tutor is also really useful. Obviously then there is just reading the textbook and trying to remember what it's talking about, but that's a less effective way to revise. For languages, it's literally just flashcards. There is no other way to revise languages, really except flashcards. And you don't even need to make them yourself. There are so many flashcard banks out there for different languages on different websites, Memrise, Anki, Quizlet, just, uh, there are so many. You will be able to find one really easily for your specific language. And then basically it's just going through those flashcards. Obviously separating them by topic, the topics that I told you to write for just practically anything is a bit more difficult, but Often in Anki, the flashcards are specifically made for GCSE students, so they'll be separated into decks of specific topics. But if you can't find those, just do a general amount of flashcards on the language that you have. There's absolutely no way, zero, zero way to revise English language, except by constantly reviewing how to structure your essays and your questions and to learn or to remember how to do that you need to watch videos mr bruff and mr sal's mr everything english oh i'm probably missing someone but they are very good at telling you how to structure your uh, questions in english language and different ways on how to get better at english language so watching those videos are probably the best by the way every single website that I'm talking about will hopefully be linked in the description. Once again though, CGP does have a whole textbook on English language that you can just read. And that's it. That's the testing phase and the revision phase. But these phases only, well, hopefully should last only weeks. Testing phase, a few weeks. Revision phase, a few weeks. But then the point is to restart. Once you finish your first revision stage, start the second testing phase by doing it all again, but not for your weak topics anymore. Do it for the topics that you got the least on for when you were first testing the topics. Going over those weak topics again is a different story and it may be difficult for you to plan around that and to find a way to go over those weak topics again after that first revision phase. But obviously in the testing phase, if you have time, you can go ahead and do more questions for each topic on those weak topics. If you get more than 50%, great. Don't do them again and just do the ones that you got over 50% on last time, but just lower, like in the 50s and the 60s. And basically just keep on repeating the cycle all the way up until GCSEs. Revising during GCSEs is a whole different thing to revising before GCSEs. Trust me, I will make a separate video on that, but that is all I had to say for this video. 
I hope it helped you and basically this video is kind of trying to replace the 10 week revision plan that I said that I used for my GCSEs because it was done in a very messy and specific way because I did it with my friends as well because like it was kind of coordinated so this is trying to replace that but I can still find a way to do the 10 week revision plan video this is probably a better plan than it though just saying so I hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to subscribe and like and comment have a nice rest of your day